so we have looked at shortest paths both the single source version and the all pairs version with and without negative weights and now in the context of weighted graphs we move to a different problem which is the problem of computing minimum cost spanning trees so to motivate this problem let's look at a couple of examples so here is the first example so supposing you are in a district which has been hit by a cyclone and many of the roads are damaged so immediately after the cyclone of course the first priority is to restore the roads but you also want to restore the roads in such a way that everybody can move around as quickly as possible so you don't want to start at one end of the district and move sequentially to the other end of the district what you want to do is prioritize the roads to be repaired so that everybody is connected to everybody as fast as possible so which set of roads should you restore so that connectivity across the district is maximally restored rather than individual parts being connected and other parts being disconnected Here is another context. So suppose you are an inter internet service provider. So you provide internet connectivity to a large number of customers in different cities. And then your customers are demanding reliability. They are saying that in some cases because of some damage either due to an accident or due to some construction or something if a cable between two cities gets cut then their service is cut. So you want to lay a parallel cable to ensure that if one cable is cut the other cable still works. But at the same time you want to do this in such a way that you don't spend too much laying parallel cables everywhere you don't want to double up every cable in your network you want to double up sufficient number of cables such that between any two locations on your network there is a redundant route right so you are not obliged to put a double cable between every pair of nodes or every pair of cities on your network only enough of them so that everyone is guaranteed to be connected to everyone else even if one link fails right so this is a related problem so these are both problems which feed into this problem of finding a spanning tree so a spanning tree essentially asks us how do we take a graph which is connected and retain a minimum set of edges so that it remains connected right so a minimum set of edges that is connected is a tree so we said that a tree is a connected acyclic graph and we will talk about trees in more detail in this in this lecture but the intuition is that if you want to connect n net n nodes in a minimal way what you end up doing is connecting them in such a way that there are no redundant paths there are no cycles so this is a tree so if you add an edge to a tree you add a redundancy so you get a loop if you remove an edge from a tree because it's kind of minimal if you remove an edge from a tree the tree will fall apart right so it's no longer going to be connected that's why it's a minimal acyclic connected graph so what we want in this situation both in the road situation and in the telecom situation that isp situation is that we want to connect a subset of the nodes now we want to say we want to restore a subset of the roads or we want to double up a subset of the links such that everything is connected to everything so we want to find a subset of the edges in the original graph which if i deal with them either by repairing the roads or by upgrading them to a double link i will end up connecting everything to everything so here on the right for instance is a graph and this red thing is a spanning tree so it is a spanning tree so a spanning tree is something that connects all the vertices so it spans the graph right it touches every vertex in the graph and it is a tree so it's a subset of the edges it touches every vertex in the graph it is a tree so the red edges here form a spanning tree okay now this spanning tree is not going to be unique so here is another spanning tree so these orange edges now also so this one is also a spanning tree right so the earlier one was one which went this way right and now we have one which goes this way right so we have two different spanning trees you can have multiple spanning trees right so you could also have a spanning tree which goes like this for instance this is also a spanning tree so our interest is weighted graphs so supposing our goal is not just that we want to find a subset of roads to fix or a subset of edges uh, uh, telecom links to double up but there is a cost associated with this right so laying a road depending on the location and various other features laying the road may not be your same cost all over the place similarly there may be difficulty in laying cables in some places not in other places so now if we have a difficulty or a cost or some kind of measure associated with every edge that we want to deal with can i find a shortest or minimum cost way of doing this right so i want to find a minimum cost spanning tree so it's not so we saw that there could be many different spanning trees right so it's not just any old spanning tree but a spanning tree who if i look at the cost of the all the edges which i am 
adding to that tree. So that's the way I'm going to define. So remember when we had a shortest path in a weighted graph, we added the cost of all the edges in the path. Right? So here we are constructing a tree in a graph and we are going to take all the edges that fall into the tree and say that is the total cost I'm going to spend if I'm going to build this tree. Right? If I'm going to repair these roads or if I'm going to develop these cables, this is going to be my total cost. So I want to find the minimum such spanning tree and this is called a minimum cost spanning tree. Right? So if I look at this example for instance, so here is one spanning tree. Right? So this spanning tree has cost 18 plus 6, 24 plus 70, 94 plus 20, 114. Right? Now we can easily check that this is not a minimum cost spanning tree in this case, a small graph, because we can actually construct this green tree for instance, which has a shorter cost. Right? So this is 18 plus 6, 24, right? uh, 44, so, so this is not, this is 52. Right? So this is actually 28 plus 6, 44, 52. But if I take out this and I put this in instead, right? so this is also a spanning tree. So this is a spanning tree also for this graph. And this you will check has cost 44. Right, is 28 plus 16 is 44. So among all the trees that I can draw on this particular graph, it turns out that 44 is actually the best one. Right? So in order to come up with algorithms or strategies to discover minimum cost spanning trees, we will use some basic facts about trees and these will be useful in general. So it's very good to write them down once and for all so that you know them and you remember them so that you're aware of what you're doing when you're dealing with trees. Right? So as far as we are concerned, the basic definition of a tree is that it is a connected graph and it is acyclic. This is all we are told. You are given n vertices, the graph on n vertices is connected and it has no cycle. So we are assuming this is an undirected graph. Right? So it has no undirected cycles. What can you conclude from this? Okay, so this is a tree. A tree is just a connected graph which is acyclic. So the first thing you can conclude is that if the graph had n vertices, then the tree must have exactly n minus 1 edges, not more, not less. Right? It has exactly n minus 1 edges. So here is one argument why that is the case. Right? So we know that this graph is connected. So remember that we talked about connected components. So as an undirected graph, this whole graph this that I am given initially is a single component because it is connected. Okay? But now I also know that it is acyclic. So if it's acyclic, I claim that if I delete an edge, then it must disconnect the graph. Because if it did not disconnect the graph, then if I delete an edge and I can still go across that edge from i to j by some other route. right? So I've deleted an edge ij in the tree that is given to me. Before I deleted it, the edge was connected. After I deleted, if it's still connected, it means there is still a way to go from i to j. But if there is still a way from a go, go from i to j, it doesn't involve this edge ij. So if I add back this edge ij, then I can go from i go to j by the other path and then come back on this edge. So there is a cycle. But I also know that the tree is acyclic. Right? So therefore, it must be the case that when I remove an edge from a tree, the tree will fall apart into two components. It can't fall apart in more than two components because there is only one edge only connects two parts. Right? So the whole thing was one component. It's like I cut one thread and the whole thing falls apart into two pieces. Now I have two connected things. right? I cut one more edge. What will happen? One of these two will fall into two more things. So every time I cut an edge, I create an extra component. right? The, I make one component into two components. The other components are unchanged. So every time I delete an edge, I am going to create one more component. But how many uh, components can I create? Well, I claim that at most I can create n components because there are only n vertices. So finally, uh, the minimum component is a disconnected vertex isolated by itself with no connections. Right? So I started with one component and I ended up with n components and every time I did plus 1. So how many, how many times can I go from 1 to n doing plus 1? n minus 1 times. So I could only delete n minus 1 edges. Right? So this is one argument saying that every tree on n vertices must have exactly n minus 1 edges. So this says there are no more than n minus 1 and you can obviously argue that if I had fewer than n minus 1, then at some point this thing would have got disconnected earlier and that's also a contradiction. The other flip side to this is that if I add something to this tree, then it will create a cycle. So in some sense, this is a minimum connected graph. right? It's a minimal connected graph. That is, adding more edges will only complicate the situation in terms of uh, connectivity. So adding an edge is essentially symmetric to what we said before. So we said before that if you delete an edge, you must dis split the graph into two, otherwise there would have been a cycle. Now if I add an edge, I know that i and j are already connected in the tree. So if I add an edge, by the same logic, I have created a cycle. Right? So therefore, whenever I add an edge to a tree, it creates a cycle. 
the third fact is that between any two points in a tree there is only one way to go right there is only one path between any two vertices in a tree this is not true in general as we have seen in many graphs you can go many ways for instance when you are calculating shortest paths we found alternative paths which got us uh, shorter weights and so on but in a tree this is not possible in a tree i can only go from i to j in one way it is connected guaranteed but it is connected by only one way right so we'll just look at a pictorial thing so supposing there are two ways to go from i to j right so the argument is that if there are two ways to go from i to j then somewhere in between there must be something like this a structure like this where the two paths diverge and then two paths. so the two paths might diverge at at i and j itself it might be that i have to completely separate paths from i to j but whichever way if i can go to i one way and come back the other way either on the entire full circuit or somewhere in between there must be the cycle where i can go around the cycle right so if i have multiple paths from i to j there must be a cycle somewhere right so these are these three facts about trees right so that it has exactly n minus 1 vertices if i add an edge it creates a cycle and there is a unique path between any two vertices so to combine this we can basically uh, say that if i give you any two of these conditions then the graph is a tree so if i tell you that the graph is connected and acyclic which is what is the definition of tree i showed you that it has n minus 1 edges if it is connected and has n minus 1 edges then it must be acyclic right if it is acyclic and n minus 1 edges it must be connected so if i tell you any two of these three facts you can conclude that the graph you are looking at is a tree okay so this is a very useful thing to remember when you are going forward so we are going to use some of these facts in order to design algorithms for this problem that we are considering which is to build minimum cost spanning tree so remember a minimum cost spanning tree is a tree which touches every vertex of the given graph by taking a subset of edges which covers all the vertices and among those you want a tree in which the sum of the edge costs that you have used to build this tree is minimum so there are two strategies that one can think of to do this and we will look at two algorithms to follow these strategies the first strategy is to start from a single vertex or a smallest single edge and grow a tree right so you try to build a tree incrementally you start and then you keep building a tree so you start add an edge make another tree add an edge make a bigger tree if you add an edge and it doesn't make a tree you don't consider it so you just grow a tree right so we will look at it this is called prims algorithm the other way is to take a disconnected thing and connect it into a tree so initially you can say that all the vertices are apart and you say okay let me take a small edge and connect two things so now i have got the starting point let me take two other edges two other vertices connect them and then let me connect this to that right so you build a tree by kind of grouping together the components rather than growing one tree. so this is called kruskal's algorithm so we'll see both of these in detail so we'll understand the difference between these two strategies and see how they work